Honestly, you're mistaking the difference between a casual gamer and a casual player. Casual gamers, like I said, they're not hardcore gamers because of the types of games that they play. A casual player, however, is somebody who's only going to put in some time into a game, not all. They're going to play it a little bit here and there. I think that's where the mistake came I don't know, man. I mean, casual player, casual gamer, tomato, tomato, potato, potato, I mean... But casual gamer and a casual player, I mean, to be honest with you, I think I'd rather be called a gamer than a player because if you say, well, you're just a player, that usually has a different uh, term to it. <laughs> usually you don't want to be called a player. Um, and if you don't, I'm not going to sit here and try to explain it if you don't know what I'm, what I'm talking about. I'm saying... Um, it's not a good term, okay? How about that? It's not something to be proud of. How about that? Um, but yeah, as far as the difference between a gamer and a player, I mean, really, it's, it's the same thing. Came through. I probably mixed up that terminology a little bit, but I still think that the message... By the way, I have not played this game yet. For, is, is this Fortnite? I know everyone's talking about it. I think my my uh, nephews play it. Should have gotten through to anybody who would have noticed this. Okay, so the stuff packs for animals were the only thing that you feel like was a money grab. There are hundreds of dollars of DLC in this game. There aren't many other games where you have something like that happening. Uh, okay, once again, the thing that I showed you on Steam with the $4,000 worth of stuff for Flight Simulator and $8,000 worth of stuff for... Uh, Train simulator, yeah, again, there's your worst case scenario right there, and Sims is nowhere close to that. I don't know why he st started with the video saying DLCs were the issue. So many games have DLCs. The nature of The Sims is that it is a big, powerful game. Okay, and I agree with her here. I don't think DLCs are the big problem with The Sims 4. I think the quality in Sims 4 is the problem. Um, like she was saying, it looks like they're cutting corners. I agree. There are some basic things that are missing from this game that both of you have pointed out. The cops and, and I will have cops and robbers. <laughs> uh, the firemen. What? There's no gardener, right? Garbage compactors. <laughs> um, they're not there. Um, these little glitches that I've seen to where they, um, they jump from one spot to another when like, there's no walking in between. It's like, huh, what the heck happened there? Um, there's the whole thing about the elevators and the elevator animations and yeah, that to me is what's killing it. The quality is killing it. I don't think the DLC is killing it. I think the Sims 3 store was was definitely not helping uh, the Sims 3. I think that was definitely giving it a bad reputation, but uh, and that's why they did did without it. For Sims 4. They had to, if they had the Sims 4 store going right now, um, I don't think things would be going very well. Um, I think it's more the quality. And I think Sims 4 is just a broken ship at, at this point. I think they've been able to patch some things up in there um, decently to where the ship is kind of floating, but it's not floating steady. It's kind of rocking back and forth a little bit. Um, but uh, my thoughts anyway. If you think that it's okay to excuse hundreds of dollars of DLC and just basic aspects of gameplay because the game is big and powerful that's part of the problem right there i play a lot of different games and, and let's say fallout a series i spend a lot of time in casual players aren't going to enjoy it a lot because there's a lot of different systems and a deep intertwined story that you're going to have to play okay i agree yep casual players probably won't get into that 
Maybe the mobile game. I haven't played the mobile game. Through, but if they ever took half of the guns, half of the map, half the quests, half the armor, half the radio station, half the unlockables, half of pretty much everything, and put it behind DLC that costed a total of 10 times the market value of the game at launch, there would be a mob at Bethesda's headquarters. I also. Well, I don't see how that would be any different than EA. <laughs> I mean. There's passionate fans for The Sims. I'm surprised. I'm sure they've had mobs in front of their doors. I don't know. Um, but to say that, um, what are you doing, Kitty? To say that uh, the um, Fallout and, and Elder Scrolls players are uh, a lot more than uh, Sims. I think they can equally have, you know, their own mobs. Minecraft could too, just if they were to do certain things. <laughs> combat update, can anyone say? I don't have a problem with the combat update, but boy, that, that really split the, the, the community down the middle. That's 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 a different topic we won't get into. <laughs> I also enjoyed how you ignored the entire argument about Battlefront 2 and EA being shamed over that as an example of... Uh-huh, and it affected their stock for a short time, anyway. It continued to go up anyway, but... Anyway. Breed. For example, The Sims 4 City Living, there were elevators in that, but there was no elevator animation, and you couldn't build with elevators. Like, that's a detail that I was like, well, this is like a step down from The Sims 3. This sucks. And I don't think they're holding on to those elevators with animation waiting to release an elevator pack to make more. Yep, I agree. I agree. It, it, it just... They rush it out, they cut the corner, they, whatever the case is. I agree with you on that one money it's just like a corner has been cut no the reason that there is no point about the elevator animation and stuff being all about money is that these things weren't just blatantly cut out of the original game as fan favorite features with no sort of good explanation behind it trying to compare the importance of elevator animations to being you know fan favorite features like pools and toddlers both being cut is only proving the point they're not equal at all not an importance to gameplay not an importance to the community and not an importance to EA to actually hold back for money. There are no firefighters in the game. Hold on, guys. There are no police. This is where I actually have to cut for a moment because my cat is being a snot. Okay. I'm back. So now, if you see any jump cuts with me, it's because there's something interrupting me. <laughs> that would be my cat. One of them, anyway who thought it might be cute to start walking on stuff that he shouldn't be walking on. He might be a guest star on this uh, episode. There are no in the game. There are no burglars in the game. Like, there are a lot of question marks with why these things aren't in the game. I don't think they're saving them for content. So you just admitted that you feel like there's times that they cut corners and you listed specifically police, firefighters, and burglars as things that weren't in the game after asking to list things that you Christian thought were Elkins. being taken out of the game just over time to kind of, you know, that doles down the gameplay? I mean, that doesn't seem to make any sense at all. So the rankings for sales actually goes Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3, Sims 4. Sims 1 has sold like 16 million copies, I believe. Sims 2 is up over 13 million. Sims 3 at over 10 million. Sims 4 at, what, 5 million? I okay, so he's... Co Maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, but this is a contradiction that... Really? Told you. He is a little troublemaker. So you were saying that Sims 3 was like one of the best selling Sims games towards the beginning, but then, you know, you're saying Sims 1 was, so it's just a contradiction. I don't think you meant it that way, um, but I'm just this is just something that I, I, saw, I I've saw and maybe you meant it differently than how it came. I don't know. This is just what I've noticed. Just want to point out, in comparison to 3, which has sold this, you know, throughout its life cycle and a little bit after, you know, Sims 4 started, the fact that it's still double what The Sims 4 sold and The Sims 4 is almost out of its life cycle or its average life cycle is not good at all. And it's proving that over time the sales are declining for the game series. Okay. So I stopped there, I guess, to do a little bit of uh, talking. Can't really think of much more to say. 
Um, Sims 4 has been out for a bit and it does seem like it's it's really lacking like it should be at a level where Sims 3 was at this point and it's not but um, do I think there's going to be a Sims 5 maybe maybe it'll be good I don't know this is EA we're talking about <laughs> It'll be whatever it's gonna be, I'll tell you that. In fact, even though the two titles are both older, both The Sims 3 and The Sims 2 outsold The Sims 4, there isn't really an excuse anymore. I mean, we have the most people ever playing video games right now. The Sims 4 has been out for four. That might be the case, but just because there is a lot of people playing video games, um, one, I think the majority of those gamers are on mobile. Um, and two, like I was saying at the beginning, I don't think Sims is at its peak of popularity anymore. I think that train's left the building. So there may be a lot of players, but they are definitely not in the Sims area. They're, they've moved on to other, other stuff. For years now, each of The Sims games gets on average about five years to be the newest game in the franchise, and unless The Sims 4 literally doubles its sales already and then adds some more from now until a Sims 5, the game won't ever touch the sales figures of The Sims 3, which is the best selling game in franchise history. Okay, so see, now there's a there you are with the contradiction again. You're saying Sims 3 is the best selling game in franchise history, but yet. You're saying Sims 1 and Sims 2 sold more than Sims 3. So maybe you meant that differently than how you're how you were saying it there. I'm not sure. But that that's contra that to me is contradicting. And we have another black space. But The Sims appeals to a different category of people. It's just a casual game where there's no real objective except for to play however you really want to. It appeals to yeah, I'm, I'm with her. It's more than a casual game. <laughs> to a different crowd of people than the usual EA game. And if you notice, they really pull it out on all these casual players across all kinds of different games. EA is taking advantage of The Sims and these casual players who play. Stop They're saying casual <laughs> players! <laughs> also get sick of hearing the fake... I can't help but laugh when she does that. You could tell she's annoyed. Stop saying casual players. I'm with her though. I agree with her. I, I to say that Sims players are casual players. I I I don't agree with that. I I do think that there might be times where someone may go in and and play their you know their Sims maybe for a little bit. Um, but I mean I'll tell you from um, doing my uh sims 4 series i'm doing the sims 4 series on this guy called nero the hero um i get i get to playing it and i want you know and i and i stop the the video and before i know it it's like 30 40 minutes have passed i'm like oh my goodness i didn't mean that the video to be so long like this video is probably really long but um yeah no it's it's not a casual game and this is not bejeweled you know where you're sitting playing bejeweled for you know 40 minutes or something like that you know bejeweled is like you know you pick it up you play for a few minutes you know, pac-man you know you go and put a quarter in and you play until your lives run out you know that's a casual game sims is no it's not a casual game i'm sorry i disagree with you there we agree to disagree how about that argument that recreating all the content in the sims is really hard it takes them time to recreate everything which first of all it hardly does we have um well i'm not a game developer and i don't know you very well optimus but i'm going to assume that you're not a game developer and I, I can't if you're depending upon what kind of game engine that you have I, I, I think it's that's another very unfair thing to actually say it's like uh, 
oh, they should have been able to whip this game out with this, this, and that. They'd done it before. But if it's a completely new engine, I mean, it's kind of like you have to re... It's like almost you have to reprogram some things from scratch. You have to... I don't know. It's I don't know. It's hard to explain. I, and I only say that because um, I was taking a, a Java course and I was trying to. My goodness, that thing was hard. <laughs> trying to trying to put together a uh, a simple little game program or something in Java, that was a pain in the butt. I I had, I had struggled with that, so. No, I'm not. I have not been in game development, but from what little I, I dabbed in in Java, which I know is just barely scratching the surface of game development, that was a pain, and I could barely get through it. And so I can only imagine that actual game development is a probably a total nightmare. The best technology that we've ever seen in history. Okay. Now back on De La Grassi here, where she's doing these close-up reaction videos, kind of like, um, it's, it seems condescending when, when you do that. Um, that's, that's how I, I see it. Um, maybe that's a thing that you do on your videos again, but it seems condescending when you do it, and I don't think it's a... A good idea. I think it comes. I think it comes off the wrong way. Most of the content is actually already made. You don't even have to really remake and create much more different stuff because I mean, like you know, swimming pools, toddler stages of development, and other content have been in the game before. You can what? just port it and update the textures. Boom! Voila! This argument is entirely invalid. It no, I, 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 I'm gonna disagree on that one too. I think maybe some things could be ported, but sometimes on some things you have to just completely do it all over again because it's a whole other engine. And come on, I mean, Sims 4 is nothing like Sims 3. They're, they're two different engines. Um, Sims 3 may have been... I, I don't know. I, Sims 4 might might be built off of the Sims 2 engine. I, I, I would believe that more than I would believe it being built off of Sims 3, but... Even so, Sims 4 still has a completely different look and feel to it that it just... It's hard to explain. Um, but... I think there's a lot more going on here than what I know, you know, and, and what she knows. I, I think everything that's being said is just subjective, really. If you're right now looking to get The Sims 4, but you haven't played The Sims 2 or The Sims 3, I advise you not to make that decision. Just get an older version, get a more fun game with more to do right off the bat, and you're not going to regret that decision. It's going to be... Okay, so... Oh, that is debatable right now. Um, and here's why I say that. Sims 3 may be a good choice if your computer can handle it. Um, however, Sims 2 does not like Windows 10 very much. You can get it to work on Windows 10. You have to jump through quite a few hoops and uh, stuff. I think I had to like look at mod the Sims 2 in order to find workarounds in order to get it to work. Um, I think you can get Sims 1 to work on Windows 10 a little easier than you can get Windows or uh, Windows 2, Sims 2 to work on Windows 10. But I can see where maybe if you wanted to get into the Sims, Sims 4 may be the way to go because that one actually is designed for the modern operating systems out now, whereas Sims 2 is is it's probably going to give you problems. I mean, heck, I mean, with a Sims 2 on my system, and I have a dual boot of Windows 7 and Windows 10, but even on my Windows 7, I can't crank the graphics up all the way high because the, the shadows are all messed up. I have to put it on medium. It's, it's ridiculous. And I have a good graphics card and everything, but it developed further than what 
Sims 2 was that it, I don't know, it's just a real pain. But anyway, so I, I kind of disagree with you on that one, um, with the exception of Sims 3. But you now, if if someone does not know that a solid state drive would be the best way to go, then they might be in for a big disappointment. Even worse in The Sims 5 if we don't make it apparent that we don't appreciate the tactics from EA. Thank you, guys. Yeah, so, you know, we definitely have to make our voice uh, heard in regards to what we like and what we don't like. Um, and that definitely became apparent with uh, Star Wars Battlefront um, with that whole fiasco. So I agree with him there. So if there are things that are bothering you, um, you know, you. you the best way to voice your opinion is with your wallet. Um, just look and see what's happening with the Star Wars franchise right now. Fan base is split in half. Um, Solo Star Wars story did not do very well. Um, and there's just I that's a whole nother video that <laughs> that we could do that I have done, um, but we won't get into. But anyway. Thanks for watching. Let's just have a look at this guy's channel. How many videos like this has he made? Why does Sony hate cross-platform? YouTube is at, at it again. Activision has hit a new low. The fall of Titanfall. Is PUBG dying? SimCity is dead. I see a bit of a theme going on here. Yes, I agree. I see a theme too. There are other videos though. The, it's not all negative. Maybe mostly. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't go through and count and sit there and make a list of, you know, I just from the ones I saw, there was there was a lot of uh, um, conspiracy type of stuff. And, you know, what? Well, that's OK. Maybe that's what you're into there. There's this uh, there's this. Uh, oh, man, I forget the name of this YouTuber. He does these uh, movie. He's what is he like the movie theory guy. He goes in like. Uh, like for 30 or 40 minutes about a particular movie or theme and 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 goes into all these details of like how the apocalypse is going to happen or how the Illuminati is part of it or, or something. I think some of you know who I'm talking about. Um, and he usually has this little like uh, paper figure of himself that kind of like moves up like this and yeah, I totally forget his name. It's, it has something to do with conspiracy, movie conspiracy theories or movie theories or something like that. It's entertaining, but he, he goes on quite a bit. Kind of like me, actually. Oh, the Sims fans. They're such casual gamers. They don't understand how the gaming industry works. They have no idea they're being taken advantage of. They're not like other gamers. Okay, so this was not a good call on, on your part. Um, Grissy. um that came off a little uh, too rich. <laughs> um, that I'm sure may have. Uh, well, no, I know that turned him off, and I think that turned off some other people that watched it because it was kind of like you were um, making fun of the situation. So I don't think that was a good idea. Um, but, uh, yeah, he... Your entire video seems to be based off this idea that I think casual gamers are stupid and deserve to be criticized, while the entire time you've missed the point that casual gamers are not stupid. Okay. He only has this up here on the screen for a brief moment, so we're gonna do the, uh, honor, or whatever, of, uh, Pausing this so we can actually read it. It says, actually, it seems that you kind of manipulated that point and spun it to say that I called them naive when I obviously stated that most casual players don't generally keep up with leading game gaming industry news and tried to make it seem like I was being derogatory towards them, which in turn sent many of them my way with no other intention than to have a jab at me for something that I never literally said. What are you doing, kitty? I'm watching you. Go sit down. Go sit down. Go over there. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Will you lay down? <sighs> okay.
okay, so... <laughs> Um, one, I think you're being harsh. Uh, I don't think she's trying to manipulate the point. Um, I think she got a little carried away. Um, but, uh, I do agree that, yeah, your casual players or gamers, I'm sorry, to me, a casual player or a casual gamer is the same thing. Um... They, yeah, they're not going to keep up with the leading gaming industry. So someone who just casually plays, uh, like my examples, Bejeweled or, you know, some mobile game, they're probably not going to sit there and go into and, and look, well, how's their stock doing today? How's their business doing today? Um, uh, what kind of other games they got going on? You know, they're probably, you know, or what else is going on in, in the gaming industry? Yeah, you're, you're right. Yeah, they're most likely not doing that. I when I think of casual gamers or players, I think of someone like my in-laws or my mother, um, that they have a game on their phone and they play, you know, maybe for a little bit. Uh, I know for sure that they're not sitting there and looking up their stock or, you know, looking up to see what kind of news that they've got. I'm going to get you, boy. I'm going to get you. Come here. <laughs> You're going to be on camera. Um, now, as far as what uh, the people from her channel went to his channel and took jabs at, I'm, I'm not really sure. But are not generally involved enough with the gaming industry news to understand the backlash against DLC because obviously they don't play video games enough or care about the industry in general enough to follow up with this. You cut a lot of this out of your video, which has in turn sent plenty of your fans to my channel with these... And I don't think she meant that intentionally. Um, I think she, she watched your videos, she picked parts um, to make comments on. I don't think she like analyzed every bit of it. Um, you know, it's just kind of like I'm taking parts of your video and her video and her video of your video and your video of her video and, <laughs> and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And, uh, I've got no script I'm going by here. It's obvious. I'm all over the place. Right. So, and that's just, to me, that's just how I keep things honest. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't work with the. I don't work with a script. I just kind of say things how they are. Sometimes that doesn't always turn out well, but anyway. Misconceptions that the video held. You're right when you look at my channel and say there's a theme because there's a theme to both of our... <laughs> okay, yeah, it... I wouldn't say it was a subtle uh, insult, but at least you put a smiley face. <laughs> um, I think she was trying to be cute, but it just didn't come off well I don't think our channels that are way different I analyze and talk about a plethora of games and discuss what is making them successful yes, what is do. damaging them you know granted The Sims does have a unique audience it is a very unique game there aren't really any other games like it you can't mm, well no yeah there are there are there are not other games like The Sims that's for sure but The Sims the Sims fans are not the most passionate fans on the planet because uh, take Minecraft. You talk about fans about Minecraft. You want to talk about passion? There's a lot of passion, boy. Man, he's being a problem. Um, there's a lot of passion of players there with Minecraft. Um, just look up that whole thing about the combat update. Combat 1.9 update, and and you'll see like how it's just split players down the middle as far as that update's concerned but anyway um then you've got uh fans behind uh like skyrim and the modding community and there's a whole lot of passion behind that so i don't think mal i'm watching you you want to come be on camera come here come here come say hi well, come here. Come say hi. Come say hi to everyone. You don't want to, do you? He's just staring at me. <laughs> Meow. 
I don't know. Can you can you all hear him? Yeah, cool. Lay down. Um, yeah. So I I don't think I think some some fans are passionate, but I don't think they're the most passionate. Generalize most of the Sims players as naive people who aren't passionate about the game, who don't realize how much the game. And yeah, I don't believe that they're naive. Um, but also based on his comment, he was saying he's trying to say. Like, no, I'm not trying to say that they're naive at all. Cost. The Sims audience is one of the most passionate gaming audiences on the internet right now. If you actually look at the forums, look at the comments on Twitter, the tweets it produces, there is noise. There is so much noise. Sims people are crazy. I don't... Okay, yeah. Sims people are crazy, but so are Minecraft fans. So are Skyrim fans. So are uh, any number of many games that are out there. So it's not just limited to The Sims. Um, and there's a lot of noise, and there's a lot of noise all over the gaming industry. And um, me, I don't know. I mean, it all depends on where you go. For me, I'm seeing a lot of noise and a lot of buzz going on about Minecraft right now because of the whole aquatic update, because this aquatic update is a huge deal of the underwater oceans and how it's going to have sea life and um i'm still waiting for it to be released on java i've got it on my on my phone and it looks amazing it's absolutely amazing um but to me there seems to be a lot of noise going on in regards to that but there's so many games going on out there so i mean there's a there's white noise all over the place that's racist <laughs> Makes me think of uh, Cinema Sins. That's racist. I don't know why he st started with the video saying DLCs were the issue. So many games have DLCs. The nature of The Sims is that it is a big, powerful game, base game. You know, of course I would like more in it. I don't think we had any less in The Sims 3, The 2, or The Sims 1, except... Yeah, we do have less, so he's right for the pools and toddlers which they added for free later on i don't think those things were withheld um to make more money off i think there must have been a big mistake with rushing the pack out I don't yep there is a there is a mistake that's for sure and yeah we already covered all this stuff i don't know what happened but they've put it back in i don't think it was because they were money hungry i think it was more of like an organized organizational thing there could have been an organizational thing there could have been a mismanagement so there could have been like, uh, oops, we screwed up, didn't we? <laughs> I think there's a lot of that. I don't know what happened there. The only argument that I think interests me and that I could take seriously in this was when he was talking about the My First Pet stuff because that is really the only pack that felt like a blatant money grab for most players. Not so much because it was a DLC for a DLC, you need Cats and Dogs to get this. That would have been fine if it had been released well after Cats and Dogs, but I think the fact that it was released so soon after Cats and Dogs and the other thing was that a lot of that stuff could have been in Cats and Dogs because Cats and Dogs was lacking in the pet department. So that is totally a complaint that I get. And that Well, there were other things in this video too that, that, sh that you agreed with and, well, I don't want to sit there and go back and... It's not like I made a whole, like I said, this is not scripted. I didn't write a whole list of everything, but uh, um, there, there are a few things that you agree with him with. So don't don't sell yourself short. I mean, do, you disagreed on some things, but you also agreed on a few things too. So that's what I'm saying. I mean, there, there are people that, that are, that are um, I think, giving De La Gracie a, a more harder time than, than what I think she deserves that is something that we have to make sure that the sims doesn't make that mistake again like it's good everyone spoke up about that is ea ruining the sims 4 honestly i don't think they're ruining the sims 4 at all yeah no i don't think they're ruining it i think it's already ruined <laughs> i don't think they're making it worse um i think it was already bad to start with um like i said i think it was all it was a sh it was a sinking ship when it left port um it was it was missing it was missing the wheel what the heck is that wheel called i want to say steering wheel and i know that's not what it's called um it, you know the turning wheel captain's wheel whatever that thing is man I, I like i said this is not scripted um 
yeah it it left without its pieces and they're like the pieces are in the boats behind and they're busy trying to catch up and they they manage to get some of these pieces back on the boat but it's still missing like you know, if we hit an iceberg, there's no way everyone's going to get off this boat. <laughs> We're all doomed, man. <laughs> no, nah, man, Sims 4 is already ruined. Um, all they can do for right now is is to patch it the best that they can. Um, the game is what it is. It's not getting worse. Um, if it was, I sure as heck wouldn't have bought it. Um it was definitely bad getting out the door, that's for sure. It's better now than what it was. Um, I think it's palatable at the point, at the moment. I'm having fun with it, and I'm glad I waited until now to get it, because I definitely think I would have been pretty disappointed if I got gotten it when it first came out. Well, I think there's many aspects of The Sims 4 that is so good, that's so fantastic, that I enjoy so much. The issue with The Sims 4 isn't the DLCs, it's not that EA is being greedy and trying to make us spend more money on the game. It's been Well, they are a business, so um, uh, greedy is, again, a subjective term, um, but a business is a business. Of course, they want to make money. Um, that's how they stay in business. Very much the same ever since The Sims came out in that department. The issue is that it sometimes feel feels like corners are being cut. For example, yes. The Sims 4 City Living, there were elevators in that, but there was oh, no back elevator in the elevator animation, yeah. and you couldn't build with elevators. Like, that's a detail that I was like, well, this is like a step down from The Sims 3. This sucks. And I don't think they're holding on to those elevators with animation waiting to release an elevator pack to make more money. It's just like a corner has been cut. Obviously, when the game was released, it was really sad there was no toddlers and pools. That was bizarre, I'm not gonna lie. There were there are no firefighters in the game there are no policemen in the game there are no burglars in the game like there are a lot of question marks with why these things aren't in the game i don't think they're saving them for content okay so there you go so some of the stuff was a repeat of what we saw before you know like i said um i just picked bits and pieces of, of both videos and and just kind of put something together but there we go that is pretty much all that I really have to say about it. And I think I probably said more than enough. <laughs> now, what do you have to say about it? Uh, what do you think? This is coming from a third party here. Um, I'm curious on um, what you guys think. I'm going to put all the links uh, in the description uh, to uh, the videos and everything that, that we've been referencing. And um, I invite and encourage you to check out their videos, check out their channels, um, check out the No and that news, that, uh, that one uh, thing that I show. So watch the whole thing. It's, it's a really good video. Um, and just to kind of put things out there, I, I'm, I'm in no way trying to start a war with anyone um, um if anything i'm just i'm looking at both arguments because i think she makes a great argument i think he makes a great argument um and i'm just kind of coming in from a, a third party perspective and just kind of looking at them both and saying pretty much what i think so um hope you found this uh video uh interesting entertaining and um, if you stuck with me this long, <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, uh, other than that, I hope to see you around in other videos. Take care. Hey, there was uh, one other thing that I wanted to uh, talk about that I had forgot to um, put into the video, and that's uh, this game right here, Game, Te game Dev Tycoon. Um, it's a fun little game that kind of gives you an idea of what it's like to be a game developer. Um, it's just, it's done by an independent, uh, an indie company. And, uh, you know, as far as accuracy, I, I, I don't know how, uh, you know, accurate it is, but I will say that it is, uh, 
this rating that they have here, very positive, overwhelmingly positive, I agree with. I think that this is a great, uh, fun game. Um, <laughs> reminds me a lot of The Sims because of the isometric view, but you start off like working in your bedroom, making making games, and it kind of takes you like through time. So you're like working like text-based games, and then you're like um, going through like the old Commodore 64 days, and then working your way through like the Atari and the Nintendo and the Sega, and um, working your way up to like PlayStation, PlayStation 3, Xbox, mobile games. Um, it's a really, really neat game, and there's things in there like uh, creating game engines and uh, building upon those game engines and adding, you know, different um, stereo sound and uh, uh, orchestrated sound and all this stuff. It's a, um, it's a really neat game, and and what, ten bucks? Uh, I'm gonna tell you right now, ten bucks, totally worth it totally worth it you will get a kick out of this game um i'm i'm in no way a, a sponsor of this game or anything like that i'm just telling you just as a as a fellow gamer i had a lot of fun with this game and oh there's a new update oh new game content oh ooh, oh what did they new pirate mode new when did they march 8 when was the last time i played this i don't know New game content, better UI. Hold on, we got we got to check, check check this out. Pirate and Company. We've been quietly working on our second game, Tavern Keeper. Blah blah blah. Pirate mode. Try your luck surviving the harsh realities of piracy in this new Archer Hard game mode, in which you have to invent DRM and sell company shares to survive. You can find Pirate mode under Advanced Options. This is, uh, I might try that. Against all odds. New review screen. See, and then when you make a game, oh, I may have already played, I already may play this, but yeah, you release a game and, and, uh, it stays on the market for a certain amount of time. And there's like this whole advertising thing where you're trying to, um, uh, um, do well with it. And then you get like ratings and stuff. And this looks a little new. But, oh yeah, this definitely looks new. Okay, yeah, I don't have this this version. Swap and late game PC. Oh, okay. So, yeah, they, they kind of rename things a little bit. So, like, instead of the Switch, it's a swap and and a newer game PC. Uh, this is cool. This is really cool. So, I have to play this again um, and do a uh, gameplay video on it. But anyway... Um, when it comes to you know game development and and bringing things from one game to another, et cetera, et cetera, I don't know. Just check this game out. I it it gave me a little bit of uh, an insight on how how games are are made. You know things that happen behind the scenes. So I thought it was cool. But all right, anyway, I'll end the video here. Uh, again, thanks for watching. We're finally at the end of the episode. I didn't think or expect it would be this long, but as I said, none of this was scripted. I'm glad you stayed around to watch, and I'd love to hear what you think. Definitely take a look at all the videos I referenced so that you can see their unedited versions.